How to scrape a website with an infinite scroll? That's a question we will try to answer in this video. As usual, let's first define our parameters. What is an infinite scroll? Well, it's something you can find on websites such as Reddit, for example. It means that if I scroll down to the bottom of the page, I have access to more content. And that's the reason why we need to scroll down to the bottom of the page in order to scrape more data. It makes sense, right? It's the case on Reddit, but of course, it's also the case on pretty much every social networks. And the reason is pretty obvious. It's because when you scroll down, you are more likely to get a addicted rather than if you click on the next page button, right? But anyway, let's come back to our topic. So how do we scrape data with an infinite scroll? We can do it thanks to a web scraping tool called Octopus. If you want to download it on Windows or Mac, you can click the link in the description. And if you do not know me, nice to meet you. I'm Franek and over a year I have created some Octopus tutorials. So maybe I can give you some pieces of advice. All right, let's get started. We are going to to take Reddit as an example, I copy my URL, I go to Octopus, I paste my URL and I click on start. So far, it's easy. I turn on my browse mode, I remove the different pop-ups, we won't need that. And let's create our scrolling process. What's important to remember here is that a scroll is a loop. I add a step and I add a loop. And then I set up the correct parameters. I rename it, I call it scroll for example, and I change the loop mode from list of URLs to scroll page. So far it makes sense. Scroll area, default or partial. So far we will keep it to default and then I will show you what a partial scroll area looks like. For the scroll, you have the choice between to the bottom of the page and for one screen. The hardest part here, in my opinion, is that there is no right or wrong option. I mean, there is, but you cannot know the right answer beforehand. It's really, you have to pick one and to trade out. If it is working, good. If it's not working, you just pick up the other one. I pick up to the bottom of the page, we will make a try. For the repeats, it doesn't really matter. Go it for 10 just for the sake of the example and if the process is working I can scale things up and loop when there is no more content to load. It makes sense. And for waiting time I can set up I don't know a five seconds waiting time for example. The overall rule here is that if it's to the bottom of the page five seconds. If it's for one screen, more something faster, like one second. All right, I go to the option. I add a one second timeout here and that shall do the job. Well, to check if everything is working, I can extract some data. So I create my loop item really quick. I select my first item. I select my second item. I extract the text and boom, here is my loop item. I add a one second timeout here as well. And I redo the extract data step, loop item, variable list, 23 items so far. But let's say I can get the URL, so okay, let's go for that. Now, what happens if I scroll down to the bottom of the page manually? So I load more discussions. And if I click on my loop item one more time, I have access to 73 items. So it seems like it's working, but I'm not sure yet. So to make sure, I click on run and I make a test, I make a try. I click on standard mode and we'll see together if our process is working. I don't really like the process. I mean, it's working, but it's pretty slow. It's not really smooth. So what I can do instead is drag and drop my loop item outside my scroll item, my scroll loop. It works too. Why? Because it does make sense. If I scroll down to the bottom of the page 10 times and then I select all my items at once, it's roughly the same idea as scrolling once and getting all the data and scrolling twice and getting all of the data and so on. So we will make a trail like this. I run standard mode. It's going really fast, but we have a lot of duplicates. So maybe it's not the correct way after all. Okay, something is wrong, definitely. And that problem might lies within the X path here. So I'm going to rename that X path. If you do not know what an X path is, I've made an entire video about the topic. Let's do that really quick. Matching X path apply. Oh, but I know what it was not working. It's because by default Octopus set it up on absolute X path and we wanted a relative X path instead. What an idiot. Night might be better. So let's come back to our second question, meaning what a default scroll looks like. Well, let's make a Google Maps search. I have access to a list of establishments and same thing as before. I have to scroll down to load 
more restaurants. The thing is, I do not scroll here in the main browser because otherwise it's doing something like this, right? I'm zooming in or I'm zooming out. I want to scroll down to that specific part instead. So how can we do that? Well, simply we change the parameters and we have to add an X path and that X path will help us to identify that scrolling area. One, two, three, four. Voila. And as you can see, it's working. 216 results with zero duplicate. If I click on my scroll, see default, if I switch it to partial, I have to add a matching X path. But do not worry that much. You are pretty unlikely to encounter such issue but if it does happen it usually means you are scraping google maps and i've already made like a lot of tutorials regarding that topic this is the end of the video if you have enjoyed it you can subscribe there is nothing else to see bye